Hi, welcome. Uh, we're just getting started. And um, I wanted to let everyone know that I am recording our program today. So uh, it will be available afterwards as well. And this is Dr. Linda Mast. I'm the uh, program director for the MHA competency-based program and also the interim program director for the course-based MHA program. And I know we have students from both programs today. I'd um, like to welcome you today for our fall professional development and networking program right here, right now, Advance Your Career with ACHE Networking and Career Strategies. So very excited that you're here with us today. And um, just a couple of quick housekeeping messages. Um, please be sure that you have clicked the mute button um, or if you are on your phone, um, it's usually star six is the mute. So um, since we are recording, that will help improve the sound quality quite a bit if you can mute yourself. And um, other than uh, we'll have time for discussions later, so um, but during the program, uh, if you would just mute. And then also for those of you that are interested in uh, receiving continuing education credit, um, that is an option and um, there will be a link provided at the end uh, for you to uh, go online and provide your feedback and get your certificate of completion. And then also um, there is a chat box to the left and you'll see there is a link there as well uh, for anyone that's interested in captions, uh, uh, it, you can get a transcript of the program. And we, we have an action-packed program, so um, I, I don't want to take up too much more time. Um, just a reminder to please be sure to mute your line. And our speakers today, I'm going to start to the right uh, with Catherine McQuaid. Um, Catherine is our student representative for the Higher Education Network with ACHE. Uh, very delighted uh, that Catherine's going to be hosting our uh, speakers and also moderating our panel presentation at the end. Um, Catherine McQuaid is a healthcare professional with experience in a variety of roles. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Bob Jones University and is currently pursuing a Master's of Health Administration from Walden University. She began her career in acute care nursing and also spent several years providing health care in third world countries. Then she moved into hospital case management where she has seven years of experience and holds both the certified case manager and accredited case manager credentials. She currently serves as the manager of hospital case management for Greenville Memorial Hospital, which is the flagship hospital of Greenville Health System in upstate South Carolina. In her personal time, she enjoys running, serving her church, and spending time outdoors with her golden retriever, which sounds great. Um, so, uh, Catherine, if you wouldn't mind, um, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce um, our, our speakers as uh, their time comes up. And um, so our first speaker today is going to be Mark Sonneborn, who is our regent from ACHE uh, out of Minneapolis, and Catherine is going to introduce him. And then our other speakers will in be introduced uh, later in the program. Hello. Our first speaker is Mr. Mark Sonneborn. He is the Vice President of Health Information and Analytics for the Minnesota Hospital Association. And he holds a master's degree in health policy and management from the University of Massachusetts Amherst and a bachelor of science degree in biology from the University of Minnesota. In his present role, he manages the data collection activities for the Minnesota Hospital Association and leads industry efforts regarding transparency, administrative simplification, and e-health. He is also one of the founders and leaders for the Very Effective Reducing Avoidable Readmissions campaign, also known as RARE. Um, this campaign has prevented over 10,000 readmissions in Minnesota, resulting in over $100 million in inpatient cost savings and 40,000 more, 40, yeah, 40, more nights at home for patients. In 2014, the RARE campaign was awarded the John M. Eisenberg Award for Patient Safety from the National Quality Forum and the Joint Commission. As Dr. Mask mentioned, uh, Mr. Sonneburn also currently serves as Minnesota's Regent for the American College of Healthcare Executives. Regents are elected to three-year terms to represent their region within the governance of ACHE and to promote membership throughout the healthcare field. It is in this role that he will be speaking to us today as he discusses the advantages that the ACHE can offer both to students and to healthcare 
professional. So I'm looking forward to what he has to share for, with us. There we go. Um, there should be a screen that says ACHE Vision and Mission right now. Yes, sir. We can see it. Okay, great. So um, for those of you who may not be familiar with ACHE, that's the American College of Healthcare Executives. Uh, it really is um, the main association that healthcare executives belong to in this country. If you're a doctor, you generally belong to the American Medical Association. If you're a healthcare administrator, you generally belong to ACHE. Um, there are some other associations that are more specialized. Um, for example, the um, uh, Medical Group Management Association, MGMA, is more for clinic administrators, but ACHE is probably a little bit more general um, than that. It's more of a general association. And it's really there to help advance um, its members in the field uh, um, in, in the excellence in healthcare management. Uh, in terms of uh, why one would want to belong, um, the top two on this screen, the two bullets, networking education are most often mentioned um, by uh, members of ACHE. Um, when, you, when you graduate um, from your program, and by the way, I'm, I'm assigned to your program because it's technically based in Minneapolis, uh, and so uh, uh, all regions are assigned uh, graduate programs that they need to present to, and Walden is is that for me. Um, the, uh, there are local chapters um, that have uh, events uh, throughout the year. We have one in, in Minnesota that uh, has some around 10 events per year um, that local members can come and meet other local members. It's really important to meet people outside of your employer. Uh, you network within your employer, um, but it's very hard sometimes to meet people outside of your employer, and ACHE is a great uh, vehicle for doing that. It also has uh, continuing education. Um, there, there are, uh, this is, again, just like uh, the American Medical Association has continuing medical education, there's continuing education for administrators as well. It's very important. The, the premier event um, where that education takes place is, it, is in Chicago each March um, called Congress. Um, that's where it's a, usually about a week long, uh, about 10,000 ACHE members come to that each year uh, and, and has literally hundreds of different um, programs of education. And there's a great networking opportunities there's a, there as well. Uh, ACHE also provides career services on its, on its website. It has a, a, a cadre of consultant, search consultants that are available through ACHE and also some tools to help um, with career planning. Um, the credential you saw, and, and I saw um, one of our uh, upcoming speakers here is, is a lifetime fellow, uh, but the FACHE is the credential that you earn when you, once you become a fellow and that is very recognized within the field uh, and, and something that establishes you as um, very committed to your field. There are also several publications that you get when you become part of ACHE. Um, some is a monthly magazine, then there's research journals as well. And it also publishes a code of ethics that really uh, is the, um, you know, I like to call it uh, the Bible by which our field lives by. Uh, I gave a speech to another um, student group the other day and the professor said the code of ethics had been um, uh, put into their to a textbook that they were reading. So it really is um, the standard for for the field on ethics. Um, in terms of my story, uh, I was a student just like you uh, many years ago, and somebody just like me now uh, came to give a talk and said why they should join ACHE, and uh, maybe someday, uh, years from now, you'll be in that same position. Uh, but I have been a member since I was in school, uh, and, and I, after I uh, graduated, I, I went on to become a member and then a fellow later on. Um, it demonstrates commitment to the profession, and I think that's my number one reason for uh, why I am a member of ACHE. Um, it, it demonstrates that I'm serious about the profession. Uh, also, lifelong learning. Uh, this is, uh, you can, uh, once you are out in the field, um, your employer does provide some education, uh, but uh, ACHE really is uh, one of the premier, premier vendors for um, really cutting edge uh, what's coming up uh, type of education. 
And that's why I say ION and preparing for the future. Uh, ACFG is excellent at um, having some programming uh, related to what's coming up. Also, it allows you to help others. I, I view this as part of my uh, paying back for what are, was paid forward to me. Um, I also think it's really important to allow others to help you. Um, I, I am not good at that, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, but, uh, but ACHE exists um, as a network of people that um, have information and potential um, you know, leads on potential career changes for you uh, and other tools um, that can be very helpful in your day-to-day -day work. So that's why I belong. Um, as a student associate, a student associate is a really good deal. So I would take advantage of this while you are a student. Um, you, have, you get access to the members only a part of the website. Um, you get reduced fees for Congress um, and you get all the publications and newsletters. Um, there is some financial assistance, which I have a, a slide on coming uh, later as well. So the publication sort of the um, flagship uh, monthly uh, magazine um, that you get. And then you get one of the two journals. Um, the Journal of Healthcare Management is, is very academic. Um, the, you might use it for some of, if you're writing a research paper, um, there will be multiple articles on multiple subjects every month. Um, or maybe it's quarterly, I can't remember. Frontiers of Health Services Management is uh, a single issue uh, journal. So there will be many articles on the same topic. Um, that's the one that I uh, uh, subscribe to. Um, the latest one was about innovation in healthcare. Um, so uh, you get your choice between that. And then there's, there are um, email uh, newsletters. And there's actually a newsletter that is specifically for students as well. Uh, the educational opportunities, the getting to go to Congress is a big deal. Um, they actually have a student track um, just for students as well, but you get to um, uh, go to the regular sessions as well. Um, there's also, I mentioned, the local chapters. Uh, wherever you are, um, there should be a local chapter that has continuing education uh, and other opportunities, networking opportunities. And then there's some online uh, self-study and other tools as well. Uh, I mentioned the financial assistance. There, there are... Uh, up to fifteen five thousand dollar awards for going to um, either to the Congress, but also to school. Um, there, there are um, some scholarships available, uh, and especially um, there's been uh, an increased emphasis on ACHE on trying to create more diversity in our field. Um, we really are lacking in that area. Um, we find that there's a lot of, we, we're doing fairly well on students um, that are um, uh, diverse, but once we get them into the field, they're not advancing at the, the rate that we'd like them to. So we're, there's a lot of emphasis at the college to try to uh, get that uh, um, better. Um, there is a, a fund um, that I uh, uh, contribute to that does fund internships um, for uh, people, uh, students of color. Um, so that's, uh, you see this uh, diversity internship right there. Uh, that is based off of contributions by members of ACH. Um, Career Edge, I mentioned there are tools. There is a tool specifically for students. Um, there is a Career Edge that is for early careers, mid careers, senior careers, and also, and they just developed one in the last year for students. So if you are, uh, if you join as a student associate, you have access to this, can be very helpful in planning uh, you know, your next move in terms of how you'd like your career to progress. Um, the student associate I mentioned is a good deal. It's $75 for, for those of us who've been uh, regular members. Uh, it is, it's something like $400. Um, so you really should and take advantage of this $75 deal. Uh, and, and you can do it for up to five years. Um, so uh, three years while you're a graduate student, if you, I think most of you are graduate students, so, so you're able to do this for three years. 
And so the, the pathway is, and this is the pathway that I, that I took, uh, was I, I started when I was a student, uh, then I graduated and then became a member right away and then continued to be a member. And I, I should say that I was very much helped by mentors um, that uh, in the organizations that I've worked for um, were had members of ACHG that encouraged uh, membership and advancing in, in ACHG as well. So um, if you don't have that, it's very helpful to be involved with a chapter uh, that can help you along as well. So uh, I, again, I would really much encourage you to, to um, sign on as a student associate. I think you can find the, how to do that on the ACHG website, which is ACHG.org. Uh, and then um, when, once you graduate and, and are in the field, um, become a member. Um, so that's really all I have for today. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Mr. Sonneburn. Does anyone have any questions for him? But we have a couple minutes before we move on to the next uh, presenter. Does not look like we have any questions. Okay. Well, I thank you for having me today. It's been an honor. Uh, I know that uh, you're all over the world. I heard India. I heard South Carolina and Texas. So uh, I'm very happy to have been uh, had the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and the helpful information. So our next speaker is Ms. Dina Berggren, and she is the um, Associate Director of Career Services for uh, Walden University. She has been with Walden University since 2006 and holds a Master of Arts in Human Resource Development from the University of St. Thomas and a Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Grinnell College. In her current role, she is committed to helping Walden students and alumni acquire skills to effectively navigate their careers. In addition to advising students on career-related topics, Dina manages the Career Services Center website and collaborates on interdepartmental committees. She designs and delivers workshops, webinars, and videos, and has presented at several national and state conferences. So she is going to be presenting highlights of services of particular interest to MHA students and also discussing some trends in employer demand. Thank you, everyone, and I am very excited to be here today and uh, tell you a little bit about career services, services and resources that are available to you. And we just found out about ACHE Career Services and uh, the Career Services Center at Walden University also um, offers uh, many resources to help you in your career management. So whether you're transitioning into the healthcare uh, administration field or are seeking career advancement opportunities, the Career Services Center is here to coach, advise, and refer you to resources to help you proactively manage your career. And today we'll take a closer look at some of our signature offerings, including our optimal resume system, uh, our robust website, career advising appointments, webinars, and social media. If you haven't visited the Career Services Center, I encourage you to do so as you will find a broad array of resources to help you increase your marketability and maximize your Walden degree. So let's explore further. The Career Services Center website is a toolbox of information to help you prepare for a career in healthcare administration. You can access our website directly at careercenter.waldenu.edu and tap into many of the available resources on our site. I would like to start off and tell you a little bit more about some of these resources, uh, starting with our optimal resume system, which is a career management tool to develop application materials, including resumes, cover letters, and career portfolios. So whether you're gearing up for an active job search, preparing for an upcoming networking event, or maybe a professional conference, Optimal Resume makes it very easy to highlight your many achievements and skills and share them with others. Optimal Resume is accessible through the Career Services Center website or directly at waldenu.optimalresume.com. And currently over 15,000 Walden students and alumni are using the system, which houses over 400 sample resumes use as models in developing your resume or CV. 
Beyond the resume builder, there are also five additional modules and they include the letter builder, the portfolio builder, website builder, and the interview prep tool. And these are all great resources for building your brand with prospective employers or networking contacts. Optimal resumes templates are organized by categories and you can see here there are multiple categories related to healthcare administration, business, management, healthcare practitioners, and many others. And reviewing these samples will give you additional ideas on how to strengthen your materials. And here is a partial screenshot of an optimal resume healthcare administration template that we've developed with key elements essential to effective resume writing. And uh, as you can see, this sample is tailored to showcase the candidate's brand as a collaborative and forward-thinking healthcare services management professional. The sample also includes key accomplishments, such as the candidate's proven record of cultivating positive community relations with healthcare providers. And in the sample, she uses many industry keywords in the technical proficiencies section, as you can see here. And finally, the candidate matched her qualifications to required skills or competencies in the professional highlights section. And here, notice that she provided specific results focus examples to showcase her achievements. So once again, a complete version of this resume and over 400 samples can be accessed through Optimal Resumes Resume Builder. Maybe you're in the process of gearing up for an interview or considering future opportunities in healthcare administration. Optimal Resume's interview prep module allows you to practice your interviewing skills by holding mock interviews and recording responses to tough interview questions. After you set up your free Optimal Resume account, you can enter the interview prep feature, select your interview type, and begin practicing your skills. Practicing interview skills can help you build the confidence you need and increase your chances of landing your next position. And beyond Optimal Resume, the Career Services Center website offers videos, advice, strategy, strategies, and other information to handle almost any career challenge. Visit our website's interview tab and learn more about how to prepare for an interview how to tackle tough interview questions, and follow up with potential employers in a timely and effective manner. Maybe you're looking to expand your opportunities in healthcare administration. For that purpose, our website offers many resources specific to health sciences students, including healthcare administration careers, the resources tab is your career research toolbox. Featured here are links to professional associations, niche job banks related to health sciences, and also networking sites for health science students. You can tap into our many resources to research careers, employers, and jobs, and start preparing for your future. And join LinkedIn groups to connect with other healthcare professionals and students. You can see here three groups related to healthcare administration and also consider joining Walden University Career Services LinkedIn group and other Walden groups to network with students and alumni with common interests and goals. And for a deeper look, Career Services delivers live webinars, which often feature faculty and alumni panelists sharing their stories and strategies for career success. This list here that you see highlights webinars for career advancement, resume and CV development, and job search. Notice that we have program-specific webinars, including career opportunities in healthcare administration, if you'd like to learn more. And we archive our webinars for those unable to attend and currently have over 70 recordings you can view by clicking on the 
Archived Webinars button on our homepage. You can also work on any career-related topics with the help of a career services advisor by scheduling a 45-minute career advising appointment. And for instructions on how to reserve your appointment, please visit our schedule and appointment page, or you can always email us at careerservices at waldenu.edu. We are here to assist you throughout your program and beyond. And career services also... and also specialized webinar topics. Visit the Career Services Center website to register for live events. For instance, this month we have a resume cafe, an interviewing cafe, and a CV cafe that we are offering. And uh, finally, I would like to invite all of you to connect with Walden Career Services through social media and to join us on LinkedIn. We have uh, a Twitter following and Facebook watch videos on our YouTube channel, and read student success stories on our blog. And you can also access additional resources on the Career Services Center website or ask questions by emailing careerservices at waldenu.edu. And with that, I'm going to um, stop and ask if you have any questions for me. Does anyone have any questions? You can chat in the chat box by clicking the round circle. Thank you, Dina. Uh, we have so many resources. It's really wonderful to see them all. Thank you so Excellent. much. Excellent. And yeah. Dr. Mast, were there any questions that came in? There is one question here. Okay. Someone is asking if you offer recorded mock interviews. That is a great question. Um, actually, in the interview prep uh, module in Optimal Resume, students are able to record themselves interviewing. So a virtual coach asks common interview questions, such as tell me about yourself or what are your areas of improvement? And students can record themselves with their webcams and then watch the recording so that they are able to see how they did in answering the question, but also how they did regarding their body language. And this is a very helpful tool to do that. And again, we have a very comprehensive interviewing tab. We have many tips, strategies. Uh, we have quick start videos, a very popular quick start video we have is called Interview Strategies. And again, that can be found on the Career Center website under the Interviewing tab. So we have many excellent resources to help you gear up very quickly and be effective in interview situations of all types. Thank you. Is, there's one more question here. What are the benefits and pitfalls you have experienced or witnessed, perhaps, of using social media in networking? Sure. That is a fabulous question. And uh, the benefits of uh, social media uh, networking, especially on professional networking sites such as LinkedIn, is that you have a str then develop a strong social media presence. So when employers or networking contacts are looking to learn more about you, they can uh, search for you online and uh, they you then have a professional presence that you are bringing forward. So back in 2013, PC Magazine did a study and they um, looked at, uh, you know, how do recruiters use LinkedIn? And they, they found that 94% um, of hiring managers and recruiters use LinkedIn. So again, this is a very powerful tool. It also allows you insider information. So for instance, if you're applying for a position or at a, a specific um, organization, you can 
connect to people who work in that organization, you can also look at their profiles and then you can also determine their career paths and some of the uh, projects that they're working on. So this definitely gives you insider information and gives you an edge in the job search. Um, the, the pitfalls of social media is if you are um, not using it correctly. Um, for instance, if you uh, are po on your LinkedIn profile, let's say you um, include a photo of yourself that, that's more of a selfie instead of a professional photo, then you're presenting an image that you don't want to present out there. So you want to maintain um, a certain level of professionalism. Um, also ask yourself, how are you using social media and LinkedIn? Um, what is your target? Do you want to be an open networker and, and let everyone in who, who wants to connect with you? Or do you want to be more strategic. So having a strategy um, on LinkedIn and social media is very important. So use it with caution, connect with other, other professionals, and have a strategy. Those are the tips I would recommend. All right, thank you. Uh, there's mm -hmm. one more question here. Does Walden sure. University have a fellowship program for MHA graduates or recommendations to one? And right offhand, I, I'm not familiar with uh, the fellowships that, that do exist. I know uh, the WaldenU.edu site may have information about specific fellowships. Karen, that's a great question. Uh, this is Dr. Mast, and I, I think um, our panel speaker, uh, Dr. Miggs, may be able to address that. And also, um, if you revisit the ACHE.org site, um, there are fellowship opportunities through ACHE as well, but I think Dr. Miggs uh, can address that um, at our panel coming up. All right. I think uh, maybe we will go ahead and, and move on to the panel and perhaps some of these questions uh, Dr. Miggs can speak to also. Um, so let me go ahead and introduce him and then let him uh, um, speak briefly here. So Dr. Stephen Miggs has a doctorate in health administration from the University of Phoenix and currently serves as a contributing faculty member in the Walden University Master of Healthcare Administration competency-based program. At another college, he has taught healthcare finance, healthcare economics, risk management in healthcare settings, healthcare information systems, healthcare marketing and strategy, professionalism and communication in healthcare settings, introduction to health services, and case studies in healthcare administration, all at the undergraduate level. Professionally, Dr. Miggs has extensive experience in healthcare operations and held several executive leadership and management positions. He has worked as an independent consultant guiding organizations through strategic planning, leadership development, and organizational leadership evaluation initiatives. Dr. Miggs is a subject matter expert in the military health system and health information technology. His research and publication focus has been the adoption of electronic health record technology in office-based physician practices. Dr. Miggs is board certified in healthcare administration and is a life fellow in the American College of Healthcare Executives. He is going to briefly share his perspective on networking in the healthcare profession and then take the questions that you may have on this topic. So Dr. Miggs. Can you hear me now, Catherine? Yes, we can. Okay, great, great. Well, um, let me start over. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's a delight to be with you today. Um, I wanted to pro provide a little more background in terms of my perspective on networking. Uh, I, I've spent most of my uh, professional career in the United States Air Force as a healthcare administrator, and then for the last uh, 15 years or so, have worked in the private sector as in, in mostly in healthcare, and so. I have the perspective of both um, health care, both networking in both the government sector and the private sector, and and to be honest, uh, there's really not much difference between the two in terms of its importance. Um, Mr. Sonneborg mentioned the education opportunities with the American College of Healthcare Executives, and and over the years, I've taken uh, advantage of several of those, and and one of the presenters very prominent uh, in the education offerings is uh, Mr. Larry Tyler. And Mr. Tyler specifically uh, has a, a um, 
a seminar on networking, and, and there he talks about the four reasons why we network. And the first, of course, is to locate a job opportunity. Uh, the second is to be referred to someone about a job opportunity. The third is to find out additional information, and the fourth is to ask advice and counsel. And so with that, I mean, you, you can see that networking uh, is not only important if you just happen to be looking for a job at the time, but also if you're just gathering information and maybe thinking about what you want to do in the future. Um, and it's very, I, I love the question on social um, media platforms and networking because that, that is something that has changed over the past 10 or 15 years and I think in some ways made networking easier, but in other ways has made it more difficult because uh, for platforms like LinkedIn, they certainly do allow you to cast a broad net and, and, and really reach globally, but uh, you don't get, you're not always able to really drill down and, and develop contacts like you are able to if you meet someone face-to-face -face and have the opportunity to talk to them. So, I'll just leave my comments there and then try to answer questions uh, that you may have about networking or the importance of networking or, or the importance in affiliating with the American College of Healthcare Executives. All right, we have one question that's asking, what lessons have you learned from face-to-face -face and electronic networking and how can they be applied to a career strategy? So with, um, that's a great question. With face-to-face with -face, uh, networking, you do have an opportunity to, to really, I think, develop a, a deeper relationship with someone than maybe you do on electronic networking. Miss um, Bergman mentioned the importance of having a presence on LinkedIn. And I guess the, the other pitfall I would mention about LinkedIn in terms of job searches is when recruiters are using those uh, that data that's gathered on uh, a site like LinkedIn, they often run algorithms against that data, identifying certain keyword searches that they're looking for. So if you don't have all the right keywords in your profile, you might miss out on an opportunity. Or conversely, if you, if you have some very general keywords in there, you might get a lot of inquiries about your interest in jobs that that really you're not seeking at the time or interested in. So you just have to be careful about building your, your um, profile on those sites. Make sure that it represents exactly what you're interested in. Face-to-face, um, -face, I think, I mean, that's where I have a, probably the most experience. And there I think you just always need to be ready to engage and meet people. Make sure you always have business cards. I mean, it's as simple as it sounds, you know, it's, it's it's amazing to me how many times I've met people and asked them for a business card and they didn't have it. So it's very important to always have business cards with your contact information there. And if you get a business card from somebody, make sure you jot down information about the individual discussed with them. So you can you can follow up with them with a little email once you get back home to say, hey, I enjoyed talking to you about whatever it was you were talking about and, and look forward to staying in touch in the future. Um, it's just basic things that you would do out of politeness anyway if you were just meeting someone, and that's really how you develop a, a rich, robust network for yourself. All right, thank you. Um, someone is asking, um, let's see, about attending ACHA meetings. Do you happen to know, do you need to be a member to attend an ACHA meeting, or are you able to go as a guest? I, I think they do have uh, the ability for you to attend if you're not a student associate, for example. I mean, if, they, if, if the individual lives near Chicago, they have a wonderful opportunity because each year ACHE has their Congress in Chicago, which is their major meeting of the year, and I, I'm just trying to remember, usually it's between 30 and 35,000 healthcare administrators from all over the world attend that. And so it's a great opportunity to network with people and meet people. Um, and so I, I think I would just go to the website to see what the requirements are to, to guest versus associate, uh, student associate. But I, I would just also say the student associate membership is so reasonable. It's something you really should think about taking advantage of, and then you can attend as a student associate. 
All right. I have another question. Uh, what kind of lessons have you learned in your career? What has worked well for you in furthering your career? And what would you change if you could? What, well, I, I think the thing that's worked well for me in my career is just understanding the importance of networking and my role and responsibility in that. Uh, so one thing I would like to talk a little bit about that in that respect was just the importance of your reputation as a professional. Um, when you when you network, you you really are building a a, uh, a a network of people who may be willing to help you in the future, or you may may be uh, part of helping someone else in the future. And the way the reason that people would want to help you or recommend you or give you guidance on on um, your career or point you in certain directions is based on their knowledge of how good you are and what you do. And so how you, how you cultivate your professional reputation is critical. Uh, making sure that in the job you're in today, you do the best job you can possibly do every day, that you, as you are all doing, uh, further your education, uh, affiliate, whether it's with the American College or, uh, or as uh, Mr. Sonneborn mentioned, some other appropriate um, organization to show that you are invested in our profession. Um, those are things that, that all go towards your reputation. And so, you know, if you have a reputation for being an outstanding worker, um, a real expert in your field, I think networking will come very easy to you because people will want to meet you, they want to help you, and they'll want you to be on their team. Conversely, if, if you don't have such a good reputation, people are probably going to be less likely to, to assist you in reaching your goals. So that's the first thing I would say in terms of something that's very, a lesson that I've learned that was very important. Um, even, in the, even in the Air Force where I spent most of my career, at the end of my career I was responsible for the utilization, uh, training, and education of about 1,100 healthcare executives. And so most of how those folks got noticed or got jobs that they wanted were, was by their reputation because 1100, uh, an organization of 1,100 isn't very large. And so everyone knows everyone, and they know exactly what your capabilities are and how good you are at them. So um, it's just very important to have that good reputation. The other thing that uh, I'm, I'm an introvert by nature, uh, so I have to train myself to go out and meet people and be kind of outgoing. And that's just something that you need to do as, uh, when you're networking. You have to be willing to meet people, to walk up to strangers, introduce yourself. Um, they may be, you may know who they are, but you might be a stranger to them. And introduce yourself and just put yourself out there. And uh, that takes some courage, especially if you're not used to doing that, if you've never done that before. But, but you'll find that people are, are in our profession particularly very welcoming, uh, and, and it's easy to do. And so I, that would be another lesson that I would say, just be willing to put yourself out there. Um, things I would have done differently, I um, can't really think of too much right now except to say that I wish I had taken better advantage of social media networking when it first became available. I, I wasn't an early adopter there on that, and I think that uh, probably most, most of you on the phone are um, uh, very astute when it comes to social media and using that. And I would just say if you, you know, continue to update your LinkedIn profile, make sure you keep that current. If you're using other kinds of social media, I mean, LinkedIn is the primary professional platform that we have, but of course some, some folks would probably use Facebook and those kind of things. I would be careful about using the social aspects of that and because, you know, and even LinkedIn sometimes, you know, you see criticism on there that, it's, that there's a lot of less than professional information on there. So you just have to be careful about using those. But I would try to maximize use of those social media networks to, to extend my network as far as I could. All right, thank you. Uh, another question that perhaps um, might be helpful to, to our listeners is, what do you think about the advantages or opportunities of networking within the community where you live? So not necessarily within healthcare itself, but uh, within the community. 
Oh my gosh, yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because it's it's very important that you know as healthcare professionals, it's extremely important for us to be able to be really effective at what we do is to know what's going on in our community and be connected with everyone else in the community because it will not be unusual at all at times for you to have to reach out to somebody maybe in city government or county government or someone at a at a in an industry and reach out to them either for personal or professional reasons to get their assistance so you know in terms of in terms of um uh joining local business organizations i think that's very important because you're not only representing your organization when you do that you're also representing yourself and it's important to kind of make those contacts and so and then through doing that you'll you you will probably find ways in which to promote your organization or get your organization involved in the local community which of course in healthcare is extremely important so i would say yes uh, take every advantage of networking you know not only inside your healthcare world but externally as well to uh, make those contacts to you know, build your network for yourself and also for your organization. Thank you. Do we have other questions for Dr. Miggs? Another thing that I wondered if, if folks might be considering is as they are attempting to network with uh, professionals, especially professionals that have achieved perhaps the status that they are trying to reach, uh, how did they overcome that feeling of being an, an annoyance or a pest by trying to break into that community? Well, uh, and I can't speak for everyone in our profession, but but I know most most of us feel this way is that um, we as as healthcare professionals we have an obligation to help others in our profession, and there is a, a great uh, quote that I use a lot from Ram Dass, and it says, we are all just walking each other home. And so what that means to me is that we're, we should all take care of each other, and we, we've we all been there too. I mean, we've all started out early, have been early careerists, and have one, have have wondered, you know, what, where we're going to end up, and or if we've had a role model or something we want to aspire to, how am I going to get there? And so certainly I know I feel this way, uh, that anyone – who reaches out to me and wants to talk about just career stuff or what I've done or how I how I how I uh, accomplished some of the milestones that I accomplished? I'm I'm more than willing to give them my time, and I think the folks on the webinar will find the same thing. If you reach out to people in your organizations or communities, certainly through the American College, I mean we I think all of us as professionals as part of our professional obligation and our code of ethics are are committed to growing our replacements. And so, um, I, you know, even if you have, so let's say you have a bad experience with reaching out to someone, I would not stop there because I can guarantee you if you have a bad experience with doing that, that's probably an outlier because the majority of people in our field are more than happy to talk to and help those coming behind us um, with understanding what they need to do to achieve success in our profession. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, how how would you recommend beginning implementing a job change, like from being a physician in internal medicine to a healthcare administrator, and how long might it take? Hmm. Well, you know, in, uh, over the last, uh, I would say, 10 to 15 years, but when I first joined the American College back in the 1980s, we were mostly an organization of healthcare administrators. There were a few physicians at the time, uh, but not many, and I don't recall there being any nurses at the time. Um, that has changed significantly over the years. Uh, more and more, more and more, we see physicians joining the American College and being more engaged in. Um, management and leadership on the administrative side. Um, more, We have more nurses uh, for the same reasons now in our organization. And so I think in terms of how you begin, you make a conscious decision, um, and I'm not a clinician, but, but you would make a conscious decision, conscious decision that um, 
I've, I've decided I want to go into the management and leadership area of healthcare, and so I'm going to seek uh, roles and responsibilities that help me get into those type of positions, knowing that I'm going to be leaving my clinical practice behind at some point. Um, now, there are, some, there are some who can do both, and some do do both uh, part-time, but, and there's a way to manage that, too, and I'm probably not the best person to talk about that aspect, but you just have to, to get started, you just have to start seeking out responsibilities. And for uh, physicians, it could be something as, as uh, simple as volunteering to serve on a committee uh, within a hospital or healthcare organization where you are, an administrative committee, um, get involved in that way, and, and just so, slowly start developing those skills. Or, um, as I know we have some physicians in our program, uh, seek education, uh, you know, seek, seek a master's in health administration to understand uh, that body of knowledge and then start looking for opportunities to use that knowledge uh, in your organization. And it's, you know, some people, make, some people make that transition very easily. For others, it takes a little while longer. So it just, you, but you have to get started. So you start by just jumping in somewhere, if it's a committee or assistant director uh, position, whatever that might be, and, and just, uh, you know, combine that with your education and get going. All right. Thank you. All right. We have just a couple minutes left. Does anybody else have some last-minute questions for Dr. Mix? All right, I'm going to go through and unmute the remaining phone lines here and give those folks an opportunity just in case that they're trying to say something and can't. And Catherine, as you're doing that, I would just, uh, I guess uh, the thing I would close with is another, another thing I heard from Larry Tyler at one of his seminars years ago was, uh, you know, we have this kind of cynical adage uh, that... Uh, uh, in order to get ahead in life, it's who you know, and and some and some folks would say, well, that's um, you know that's how you get jobs in life, or that's how you get ahead. It's who you know, and and what Mr. Tyler suggested is that you turn that around and and say and think about it. It's who knows you, and that's that's kind of the the bottom line of networking is making sure that people know who you are, what your interests are, and what your goals are, and then. Uh, go about using that network to help you achieve those goals. All right. Thank you. Any last questions? All right. Doesn't sound like it. Well, thank you, Dr. Mix. I think the information you shared is very helpful. And I'll turn it back over to Dr. Mass. Thank you so much, Dr. Miggs, and thank you, Catherine, for facilitating our program today. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, so and just to remind everybody, um, there is a, a link here that you can sign on to provide an evaluation of the program and get a continuing education certificate if you want. And um, the program is recorded, and the link will be made available through your faculty and for the competency-based um, students through your coaches. So um, thanks again for participating today, everybody. Uh, really great questions, and uh, look forward to getting to know you all better. Thanks. Bye.